This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. And his oldest daughter, Rosemary, who he subjected to a disastrous experimental lobotomy, is left permanently disabled. And now his second-born son, Jack, killed. His gruesome death caught on film. Joseph Kennedy Sr.'s life's ambition is to place a Kennedy in the White House, and he will see his two surviving sons pick up the baton and reach for the Oval Office. But Bobby is murdered before he can capture the Democratic presidential nomination, and Ted is caught in a scandal that leaves a woman dead, dooming his chances to attain the presidency. In July 1969, Ted Kennedy wonders aloud if a curse actually did hang over all the Kennedys. From Joe Sr.'s death in November that same year to nearly three decades later in July 1999, when Jack's son, an heir apparent to America's version of a royal family, John F. Kennedy Jr. meets his own terrible fate, tragedies continue to haunt the house of Kennedy. The Kennedy curse is an idea that endures. Part 1. The Patriarch. Joseph Patrick Kennedy, Sr. Chapter 1. They are known as coffin ships, overcrowded, disease-riddled, barely seaworthy sailing vessels that transport millions of impoverished Irish fleeing the mid-19th century Great Hunger, or Potato Famine, hoping to begin new lives in the U.S. and Canada. Assuming they make it that far, some 30% of transatlantic passengers commonly die at sea during the treacherous 3,000-mile crossings, which can take as long as four months. Given the conditions, many travelers mark their departure from Ireland with an American wake, evoking the finality of the voyage they are about to undertake. One such traveler is Patrick Joseph Kennedy, a 27-year-old cask and barrel maker from Dungan'stown, County Wexford, and future great-grandfather of President John F. Kennedy. His name appears on the 1849 manifest of the SS Washington Irving, a ship with fewer than five years under sail. Records of shipboard conditions indicate that they are universally harrowing, and the month-long crossing from Liverpool to Boston is no exception. Overcrowding and unsanitary quarters propagate deadly cases of cholera, smallpox, and measles. The ship's crew toss scores of corpses to the sharks that incessantly circle the three-masted ship. While Kennedy family lore tells of Patrick traveling in steerage with his bride-to-be, Bridget Murphy, as well as her parents who toiled their whole lives as tenant farmers of absentee British landlords, practical evidence of that can't be found. Regardless, Patrick and Bridget did most likely meet in Ireland and plan to marry in America, which they'll do in September 1849 in Boston's Cathedral of the Holy Cross. The ship docks in Boston, a city of 17,000, on April 21, 1849. Conditions on land are not always an improvement. The Boston Brahmins atop the city's entrenched class system scorn the new immigrants as shanty Irish after the Dickensian squalor of their vermin and disease-infested tenement quarters and fruitless searches for jobs that pay a decent wage are underscored by sternly worded want ads declaring no Irish need apply. For a time, Patrick Kennedy and his bride are among the lucky ones. He and Bridget have five children in nine years, and he steadily works his trade. More than a hundred years later, on a state visit to Ireland in 1963, President Kennedy states, when my great-grandfather left here to become a cooper in East Boston, he carried nothing with him except two things, a strong religious faith and a strong desire for liberty. I am glad to say that all of his great-grandchildren have valued that inheritance. Unfortunately, at age 35, Patrick succumbs to cholera. 
the year of his death is 1858. The date is November 22nd. Exactly 150.